share um, just a story, a testimony, just so people get a flavour of what you do and what actually happens and what happened this year. Okay, yeah, there's so many. Do you want to just say your name? Oh, I'm Lizzie. Yeah! Um, there's so many that I'm really struggling to know which ones to pick. Um, so I'll give a general outline of some of them and then more, more detail on some. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, we saw some healings in the streets, which is pretty exciting. Um, a guy on crutches um, got up and was walking about, which was really great. Um, and some more healings as well. We also did some treasure hunting. Um, so we prayed uh, for clues and then went out and spoke to people who matched up. And there was this one guy called Frank, um, and he matched up to some keys, uh, clues, and um, and yeah, basically what happened was um, we saw him like every single day from that point. So every single day that we went out into the streets, we saw this guy, um, and I think he got a bit freaked out by the end. But <laughs> it was really good, um, and yeah, just so many good conversations, and also um, we followed up really well. So we had leaflets, and like people have been contacting the church plant and getting involved. So it's been really, really good. So yeah. What are you going to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> if you think... What? Oh yeah, the food. And the money. <laughs> and the money. 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 Oh, yeah. I think it was the first morning, was it the first morning? We um, didn't have any food because we couldn't find the shop. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good story. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, and, um, we were basically, there was a group of us walking to the shop, which we couldn't find because we'd walked the wrong way. And um, we were going around praying, praying for food, and we had this at Zoom. <laughs> and we were praying for um, multiplication of food. And basically, we got to the tram stop, and there was just like loads and loads of bread. <laughs> More bread than they got their hands. So wow. we got bread. <laughs> which is great. And, um, and the money. And the money. We had. Um, we had some issues with money that they couldn't get um, enough money for us out of the thing or something for the, for the woman in the, the house we were staying in. And for some reason the machine just decided to give us more money than we were allowed to take. <laughs> which is quite good. Yeah. Right. Just, just before you sit down, just real quickly, can you just tell us the impact that New Day Global has actually had on you um, since you've been on the team? Um, I think it's like changed us all really dramatically. I think. Um, <laughs> Prophetically, we've done a lot of prophetic work when we're out there on the streets and I think we've all come back with such a passion to see that done here because we're out there and I can not speak any French at all, <laughs> as well know. And um, basically we were just there and you start thinking by the end of the week, well when I go back to England I can speak English, so surely it's going to be easier in England than in France. So I think we've all come back with such a passion just to do that and just to introduce you guys to do that as well, I think. Okay, Will, this is Will who went to Italy. Yeah. And we have um, Charlotte and Beth and Alison. We actually also have um, Sharon here from it who is in Italy and is part of the church plant that these guys went out to um, set alongside, which is amazing. So you're just going to share a little bit of stories, the impact that New Day Global has on you, and then we'll hear um, just what it what it meant to the church out there um, from their experience as well. Hey, Will. Hi. Um, yeah, um, I experienced a really great week um, out in Genoa in Italy. Um, on one night, uh, I went out with Jazz Potter, um, who, those of you don't know. Okay, I said that wrong. I'll start again. We went out and we were prophesying and uh, testimonies and talking to people. And Jazz, po Jazz Potter was one of my partners. I didn't go out with her. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we just went around, we prayed, and we uh, felt God was calling us to a man that was sitting on some steps. Um, this man was smoking, um, he had some drink with him, uh, he had no socks on, but he had shoes on. So we just started speaking to him, telling him what we were doing and why we were doing it. And um, we just started telling him, um, asked him if he had any beliefs. He said he did, um, so we asked if we could pray for him, and what, we asked what he needed prayer for, and to quit his addiction to smoking, his alcoholism, 
um, his drugs. Um, so we prayed that over him and he just burst out in tears. Um, so while Jazz was praying, I had a guy, he had his hands out, his head was on my shoulders and it just really touched me. And I prayed and we stopped for about a minute and I just really felt God saying, Will, you've got a pair of socks on your feet and you just take them off and you give them to this man. For an instant I thought, no, this can't be right, my feet will get cold. <laughs> I, thought, I thought, I've got loads of socks. Um, so I took them off, I gave them to him and I told him why I was doing it. And he just kissed them. I don't think so I've been wearing them all day, so I don't know what he thought. But, um, <laughs> yeah, he kissed them, he put them in his bag and he was just touching his heart. He was so thankful. I even got a kiss, which is quite nice. No, the cheeks, don't worry. <laughs> But yeah, just what I experienced there just really showed how, how fortunate we guys are and um, just the way that that little prayer touched him just to see the guy really felt that he was healed. Um, we don't know if he came to the church, we don't know if his smoking, alcohol and drugs were healed, but he said that they were. So we just got to hope. But yeah, I just encourage all of you guys, if you get the chance to come on Global, um, you'll experience life-changing week and yeah, just meet some really great guys like us from Team G. That's it. I'm Alice. Um, my story's a bit confusing, but like, yeah, it's a bit weird as well, but just go with it. Um, basically, on one of the nights we were getting trained on how to do treasure hunting, which I'm guessing everyone's heard of. We were doing it with the children. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, basically, I got it wrong. You were meant to do like, you were meant to uh, pray for what were the words of knowledge uh, for people, a person in the church, but of me being me, I got it wrong. And I did what we normally do and prayed for physical appearance. And um, and then, look, unluckily, the woman called me out to stand up and read mine. So I had to get up and read out what I put. And it was wrong. And so like she was like, wait, you've done it wrong. And I was like, and I started really doubting it. I was like, well, surely if I've got these things in this paper, where have they come from if they've not come from God? And so I got really upset about that, and like, I got really embarrassed because like they translated it into Italian, all the Italian people were like, oh no, like that, and it was really like humiliating. So I got really upset about that, and then they carried on doing whatever else was right. So I just got really upset, and then um, and I started questioning like where it came from, and then um, <coughs> we did the worship, and I got a word for like worship. It was just like just have faith. You've got to trust me, and you'll like be rewarded for that. I'll. Um, I'll reward you if you just put your faith in me. And then at the end, I like kind of brought myself back up. I was like, right, okay, you can't let this bring me down. It must have been from God. I just must have got it wrong, like everyone does. And then two people came up, and one of my clues was twisted knees, and one of them was limping, and was it? He had a little girl, and they both had bad knees, and they both got healed. And so like, <laughs> woo, 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 woo. So, like, I just want to encourage like when you think you like when you question what's it, from God. You've just got to like have faith and you've got to know that whatever he's giving or whatever he's doing, he's doing it. And you've just got to keep pressing into him. And like even if you think it's wrong, then he can teach you a lesson in the weirdest ways like he did with me. And it's just, it's amazing. It's such an experience. And hi, I'm Dad. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, like, um, I've got kind of like three little points. Like the first one is like, God changes like you, so um, for me, I was going through some really hard stuff before New Day Global, like, um, I'm not going to go into it, but yeah, it just wasn't very nice, and then I went there and I felt really, really alone in it, and, um, and I, like, we all shared our testimonies, it was all really emotional, everyone was crying, and everyone was crying, and, um, and then I just found out that all, like, most of the people on the team have been through similar things to me, so like, God, right from the start, right from picking the teams, I put me with people that make me feel less alone with my problems and I don't know if this makes sense to you, I just thought it was amazing. And I put me with people that would make less like me less alone with my problems and like we all just support each other I think and like you genuinely become a family. It's the cheesiest thing in the world, but we call Neil Uncle Neil, Jazz is Mama Jazz, and another leader was Big Sister Vicky. Like you genuinely become a family and if you're worried about that, like everyone gets along really well, like no matter what. And then my other point was and um, like you impact people out there so we had a worship session with their church and we were like they played dancing generation 
And so we all just ran up the front after having a ministry time with them. And we, I think we literally just went mental. I thought they were a bit weird. I think they thought we were a bit weird at first, but we were just going crazy. And then the whole church just starts to come forward and dancing with us, with us singing in English and them singing in Italian. And then like, and the little children came up and we were like teaching them how to duggy and stuff like that. And we were just worshiping Jesus for literally like an hour. And then, um, you know, sometimes we do, we do that Jesus thing. We did that in Italian. Jesse, is that right? Yeah, it's Jesse, and we all did that for like, it must have been for like five minutes. And just everyone was at the end, like this meeting went on an hour late, just because we were so in the presence of God. And then we found out afterwards that, <laughs> well, we, at the church we've been doing like a, a well, they just started a series on the Holy Spirit. Um, so um, the church has been becoming more open to the Holy Spirit and the God's coming. Um, and Jazz has done some speaking about prophetic evangelism and um, that had really opened people up and a lot of people have been prayed for to receive the Holy Spirit and to use the gifts. Um, and when the guys came and did the, um, there was sort of a catalyst to the, the worship just becoming a lot freer and um, the next week the same thing happened. So um, everyone was really open to the Holy Spirit, lots of people were filled with the Spirit and um, and the worship went on and on and on and on and the meeting finished an hour and a half late again and the same thing the week after and I don't know what happened last week because I wasn't there but it was, um, it just had a huge impact um, and people were just really amazed by the enthusiasm especially enthusiasm in such younger people because um, in Italy and I think in a lot of Europe um, there isn't the same, there aren't the same number of churches like ours even just evangelical churches because a lot of stuff's Catholic. Um, so people just haven't seen that number of young people together being so enthusiastic. And um, yeah, it just had an amazing impact. And God really used it. One of the things that we were really um, pleased by was that you brought something, but um, when you went away, God had done something lasting because it carried on. So it was like, um, the catalyst to start something rather than just being there for a week and then it all being forgotten. So well done. That's amazing. You probably picked up the flavour just um, what actually happens on a new day global team. So as well as kind of serving with the church some of what um, whatever the church has happening from the stories you can tell that there's a lot of time spent praying and worshipping together as a team, seeing what God is doing in that city on that day and joining in with that. So whether that's going out and chatting with people, worshipping on the streets, praying with people, um, that's, yeah, just there's all sorts that happens and then it's kind of brought back and fed back into the church. Um, so we're just going to hear from these guys who are in Berlin. Um, do you want to just share with us something that happened on team and maybe um, what being on New Day Global has, um, yeah, how it is for you? Um, I'm Beth, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, so, first thing like, you have to understand about Berlin is that like most people, they're not open to like spiritual things at all. Like They're very sort of liberalist and like anyone can do whatever you want but just don't impose your lifestyle on me sort of thing and so it was quite hard just we had these little leaflets so we were advertising the church service that was going to happen on the Saturday that we were there um, and it was really hard to sort of like if there's not like one person who sort of like held out to him and he went to take it and then he saw it was written on it had like Gottesdienst which was like church service in German and he saw it and he was like oh no and sort of walked off again so um and we did uh, like a flash mob so we did with oh happy day sort of um sarah i don't know if you've seen she's singing at the front in the main meetings she was with us and uh, she sort of started and we all sort of joined in and we got some people in the public i think to join in and it was really good and after that like apparently uh, the people that were from our team that were giving out leaflets they just like they were just going like he just got rid of all of them and we had like a thousand or something at the start of the week we got rid of most of them and that was really good uh, and in the end uh, cause it had their website written on it and normally they said the statistics of people that look at the website every week is about 80 and by the end of the week so we were there they had about like 300 and something people oh, so wow. it was really really good we were just planting seeds uh, and that they've been interested by it and just quickly there was another and um, we went on a treasure hunt and it was like we went out in groups of three and we sort of came out of uh, sort of a 
called Tube Station and like thing came up and there was a guy selling like a German version of like Big Issue and he had a, like a crutch so our leader Pete went up and bought one of the magazines uh, and was like okay cut, like what's wrong with your foot and stuff like and he told us and he's like can we pray for you so we got down and prayed for him and that was and so um, and he was like okay it's a little bit better so we went and prayed again and it was healed and that was amazing. Woo! Woo! And yeah, and we had some really good team times as well together, like everyone got prophesied over like multiple times and it was just really, really good, so yeah. Um, um, basically while we were in Dortmund, um, I think it was in the last, yeah, the last day or the second last day, um, I tried to find a cafe where our youth leaders would wait for us, but I just carried on walking for like an hour and I couldn't find the cafe anywhere. And at some point I just didn't recognise any of the shops anymore. I didn't know where I was at all. So I was like, okay, maybe I should go back. So I started going back, but I didn't really know what the way back was. So I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. So I was like, God, please let someone come to me who knows me and who knows where I'm going. And like Five minutes after I prayed that prayer, Beth came along <laughs> and she found me and she showed me like, where the cafe was and yeah, that was really great because I had left my phone and my prayers in the hotel room so I was literally without identity or anything, I was like okay, so that was amazing, <laughs> so yeah, God has his prayer. We, we haven't lost anyone on team yet. <laughs> they do all get given cards with phone numbers and who they are and who they belong to. <laughs> Amazing, thanks, lovely. Um, just also to, um, yeah, brilliant. You probably picked, you picked up the flavour. Just, I know these guys were talking about the food and the money situation, and that is all part of being on New Day Global as well. Just that, that you get a taste of what it's like to experience real life in that nation so you'll be sent out in groups to go buy food see if you can get what you want in a different language working out the money situation just a whole taste of life as a whole um, in that in that country um yeah and it, it's amazing actually the stories that we hear when people come back of what just being away in those 10 days how that has what god has done in their lives in that time for some reason, so often it seems like when we go outside of things that we're familiar with, we seem more open to what God might want to do in us and through us. And the stories that we've had come back for just the impact that that has had on people's decisions after they've been on a New Day Bible team has um, just been amazing. And just to follow on just real quickly from the Berlin story about their internet site hits, um, I was chatting with one of, the, one of the guys that led the Berlin team who said that from giving those leaflets out, when the hits on the website, they've actually had someone come to their church and subsequently give their life to God.